Good afternoon. One of the last talks today is from Carl Voigt. He focuses on topics related to personal information management. And today he will tell us features of Emacs we may not have known before. So Carl, the stage is yours. Hello, my name is Carl Voigt. I'm going to present you some Emacs features and org mode features you may not actually know, but you might want to know. The idea is stolen from Bastien's web page, uh, but I extended the idea so that I will cover some Emacs features as well, not only org mode. Uh, the content of this demonstration is first I'm going to talk about some standard Emacs features, then I'm following up with some standard org mode features, so those two chapters are working out of the box. And then in the last part I'm going to tell you some things about some minor customizations you may want to do. My personal web page is on this URL and you find all the information you need to know about this demo, uh, the links to the conference page where I'm uh, recording this for, uh, all the content I'm presenting here, all the references and of course my software hardware uh, setup used for this video is all available on this URL here. For the sake of demonstration I'm going to need some org mode data. Uh, therefore, I have created this org mode file, which contains some example data, for example, some paragraphs, some list items, some projects, and of course, uh, some appointments. You, will f you can find the source of this file at this location here, in case you're interested in playing around with this data as well. Okay, so let's start with the standard Emacs features I'm going to demo you. The first one is a rather frequently used feature. I'm using it all the time. So when I expand the uh, data on the right hand side and I jump to the heading which is called projects and I apply the recenter top button shortcut then you will notice that it gets moved to the center of the screen, the top or the bottom. So the first time you apply it, uh, the cursor will be centered in your viewpoint uh, to the top and to the bottom. Quite handy, isn't it? Another thing which is quite handy is the scroll lock mode. So either you are using it via MX scroll lock mode or you have mapped it to the scroll lock key on your keyboard. So when I apply the key keyboard shortcut here, then you will notice that um, the cursor isn't actually moving uh, in terms of lines, but the document is moved below the cursor. So this is quite handy for uh, making sure that your viewpoint always stays in the middle. So again, applying the scroll lock button uh, leaves this mode here. Next thing here is the fill paragraph command. Uh, so consider this line, which is a very long one, and I apply fill paragraph then you notice that it gets modified to a proper paragraph in org mode. Uh, and in my case, I can do it multiple times to toggle the uh, character of this paragraph. This is because I'm using a modif modified function, which is called my fill or unfill, which you can look it up in my configuration, uh, which is linked at the page I already mentioned. The next thing is um, changing cases. So um, if you want to start with a lower case, in this word you could uh, use down case word. word. Uh, if you want to uppercase the next one, you can use the upper up case word or of course the capitalized word, uh, which is quite 
cool because I tend to use it all the time when reformatting, for example, the start of a sentence or something like that. So, the next feature is uh, available via Ctrl X and the Tab key. Consider you are working with uh, list items. For example, you want to move those three lines to the left. So the usual thing you can do is uh, either move them one by one to the left or you can use this feature. When you apply it, you will notice that now you can move the marked lines to the left and to the right. And of course, this is not only working with list items. Um, apply it again, uh, your modifications are actually done. So I have to admit that I found this command only recently. And the reason why I didn't use it was that I am quite frequently a user of rectangle functions. So you can do the same uh, when you are using the rectangle functions. For example, uh, string rectangle is inserting some characters. So now I'm inserting uh, spaces. Of course, you can insert all kinds of, of uh, characters as well. And uh, by confirming with enter, it's, it gets applied. The same thing uh, I can do for removing. So I mark this area here and I use kill rectangle. And then they got uh, the characters in between got removed. And so I can also move the, the marked section to the left and to the right. And of course, there are more uh, features for this, for example, when I'm using uh, this selection and I use kill rectangle again, uh, I can insert the same rectangle with yank rectangle here above. So this could be quite handy as well. Uh, the next feature I want to demonstrate is called insert character. Um, I always use the MX insert chair because I cannot remember the control X8 return. Um, it, you can, you can uh, remember the, the keyboard shortcut because it's inserting UTF-8 characters, for example. Uh, and now uh, you've got a prompt on the lower left hand side where it asks you for Unicode names, which is cool. Because, uh, for example, face with uh, tap and then you see that uh, it shows me all the emoticons with faces so face with let's uh, look for a nice emoticon with mon monocle and then you can insert it here or uh, let's do it again for another example uh, smiling a smiling face with uh, a halo, for example. Okay, so and using this method, you have a very easy to use method to insert special characters. Uh, and for example, it also works for arrows. Uh, let's look for some arrows pointing uh, rightwards, then curving downwards, for example. Okay, this is just one example of many. Sometimes you probably do not want to modify a buffer. You just want to read it. So consider the right hand side is a document you want to read in org mode or any format you, you like. And uh, you do not want to modify it at all. So th this case you for example could start the view mode. View mode. Uh, in this mode, um, the buffer is in set into read-only mode and with space or shift space, you can move uh, a one page uh, downwards or uh, topwards, or you can use D and U to do the same with half, half screens. So D, D or U, 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 and you see that uh, that you can uh, quite easily go to a document, read it without um, 
manipulating its content at all. And with S, you can search as usual with I search within this this buffer. For example, I search for projects um, and apply the the character uh, the, the keyboard shortcut multiple times. Then you can move to the other occurrences of the word project. So for the next feature, uh, let's exit the view mode so that I'm able to modify the buffer again. Uh, cycle spacing. Uh, so if you type some words, some words and you made some additional spaces here or there, then you can use meta space to uh, remove the additional spaces. So the, it doesn't matter how many spaces there are. If there is more than one, it gets reduced to one space only. Um, the next thing I want to demo you is very, very handy. For example, when you're programming a lot in source code and so forth. So consider you made some uh, changes here and then you made some changes there. And then you come to the conclusion that those changes are actually not as you wished it would be. So you can mark the area. It could be a region of multiple lines, for example. And then you use the undo command and only uh, the things you modified at last um, to this area gets undone with the normal undo in region command. So you mark uh, the area. Uh, the region and then apply the normal undo and the last thing that was done to this region gets undone. With the next feature, the artist mode, I'm going to switch to the empty scratch buffer and to the artist mode. When you now press the middle mouse button, you see an, the artist menu popping up. The standard thing active is the pen, so you can draw with the mouse, like with a pen. Uh, then you have, of course, some things like lines, where you can do some lines. Or you have a rectangle, polyline, and so, of uh, and so forth. Uh, I'm going to do some rectangles here just for fun and uh, you can fill things here easily and you can copy let's copy this here and paste it here for example or here um, so this is quite a cool mode if you want to draw some ASCII graphics without using a graphical tool um, for this for this purpose. So this concludes the uh, the uh, things I wanted to show you with standard Emacs features, a selection of standard Emacs features that works out of the box for you. The Org mode agenda is probably one of the most versatile features of org mode. I just want to show you some uh, tricks when you are viewing your org mode agenda. So for example, the first one is uh, you probably know already how to filter by category tag and regular expression. But one of the things I'm using all the time is this uh, um, less than sign in order to filter to the current uh, category. So if I want to only see uh, items on my agenda, which is of the category demo, I press the um, less than character. If you, if I want to uh, reset the filter, uh, I'm using the pipe symbol. 
here I can uh, limit to my garage project only and this way I'm filtering for example my business tasks from my non-business tasks on my daily agenda. Uh, if you are uh, going to tomorrow or the, the day after tomorrow and you want to go back to today you can use the dot here uh, in order to jump to today wherever you you've been before this is quite handy for uh, using uh, or filtering your agenda file entering dates and times is a very common thing here in org mode for me at least so you probably already know Control c dot to enter a day uh, but probably you didn't know that if you apply it once again for another day uh, this will get translated to a duration automatically by org mode. Uh, entering times is quite easy as well. So if I want to schedule a meeting let's say for uh, tomorrow afternoon 3 to 4 p.m. I type in plus 1D for tomorrow, uh, 3 p.m. plus 1, that's all I type in, and uh, org mode generates this nice uh, time stamp for me. If you are unfamiliar with uh, modifying timestamps, for example with shift uh, up and down for, for each of those numbers, you should definitely learn how to use this. Uh, it's quite handy, for example, for moving uh, or rescheduling um, appointments, something like that. Um, you can shift days, you can shift year, month, day, hour, minutes, um, minutes in five minute steps at least. Uh, I'm using this all the time if things get moved on my agenda or um, in my da daily life. If you are in the position of having to write uh, notes during meetings, for example, you will love this feature. Uh, if you uh, start this timer here with Ctrl C, Ctrl X, zero, then a new timer is started at the current time. If uh, you are uh, taking notes, you can use Ctrl C, Ctrl X, dot, to enter a relative timestamp of that meeting. So this is this is done 13 seconds after I started the timer. And I can add some notes here. Uh, this is also quite handy when you're taking notes for a video uh, or while watching a video. So you can start the timer when the video is started and then add uh, timestamps uh, for your notes accordingly. It's also quite handy for meetings when you have a relative time. Okay, this uh, was this happened, uh, for example, 15 minutes after we began talking or something like that. You can pause the timer and you can, of course, stop the timer once again. Next one is a rather small feature uh, for marking things. So if you want to mark the current line or paragraph or the next thing, you can do meta H in order to mark the current line or the next items. And if you are in a, a text, you can use the same feature to mark the current paragraph, the next one and the next one and so forth. You get the idea how this is working. Just to make sure that you all know this nifty feature of org mode, uh, you can move things around uh, while pressing the meta key and using the arrow keys. For example, within a table, I may move uh, the line up and down or I even switch columns. Uh, in list elements, I can move this here and uh, I indent and uh, move it back. Uh, with, with whole paragraphs, I can switch paragraphs quite easily. Uh, and of course, with headings as well. So just make sure that you're using this feature when you try to move things around.
For helping to navigate through your org mode document, you probably want to uh, use this shortcut here to jump to the last stored capture entry. So I don't have a setup here where I can capture for demo purposes. Um, and the next one is a really cool feature which adds persist non-persistent number to headings. So if you enter the org num mode, org num mode, uh, you see that uh, all the headings get their uh, numbers uh, but this isn't written to the to the text file so if you save this document there is no 2.1 going to the file uh, it's just for uh, helping you to navigate through all your your headings Another very, very cool feature I'm using all the time so that I don't have to use a standard password manager is the fact that I can add here a crypt tag and when the file gets saved, you see that when you have the proper setup with OpenPGP, the content of this file then gets replaced with an encrypted version. So the uh, encrypted version gets written to the file on saving the buffer and if you want to access the unencrypted version you have to use org decrypt entry and enter your password and then you see the clear text if you do not want to encrypt this heading again just remove the tag and that's it that's very very cool Two other features I'm going to demonstrate you is how to focus on parts of your org mode files. Um, you may probably know my blog posts uh, so that I do have some quite large org mode files and therefore searching and focus is quite important to me. Uh, so for searching I uh, probably use uh, sparse trees half of the time when, when looking for content. So let's uh, close this and search for projects via sparse trees and so you see everything gets collapsed except the parts of your file that contains the term projects which I was looking for in the first place. If you want to remove the highlighting just press ctrl c ctrl c uh, if you want to focus on a subset of your file, for example, I want to focus on demo data, ignoring all the rest of the old, of the file, then I'm using org tree to indirect buffer. Actually, I'm using a modified version from Alpha Papa. Thanks for that. You can f uh, find it in my in my configuration. Uh, and I use this so that I only see the demo data uh, sub uh, hierarchy uh, and I can do search replace, I can uh, do all kinds of operations and I'm uh, absolutely sure that I won't modify all the other things in the big org mode file which I'm not, which I'm not seeing here at this moment. So this concludes uh, the set of features I wanted to show you uh, that works out of the box when you're using standard org mode. So, we've been through the parts where I wanted to show you some standard Emacs features. Uh, we've been through, through the part where I showed you some standard org mode features. Uh, additionally to that, I'm in the mood of showing you of some minor customization features I'm using all the time and which I think are very handy for not only me myself. Uh, the first one is something that you probably have noticed. Uh, when I'm switching buffers like that, you notice that the current line gets highlighted. In my case, it's a yellowish color. Um, this might work better with uh, a dark theme, for example, which I was using until a couple of weeks ago, where when you switch the, the buffer, you see immediately where your cursor is because the whole line gets highlighted for a brief moment of time. 
you are going to need this snippet here in your configuration where you can choose on which occasions for example recenter works as well okay uh, let's recenter this line here then you notice that this gets highlighted as well for a brief moment uh, and so forth so it's it's pretty pretty uh, nice uh, having this uh, optical notion for moving around within your file another feature which I consider a very basic and very helpful one is hydras hydras are a very versatile tool uh, you can use it for example as a cheat sheet um, there comes a time in your life when you can't remember all the nifty shortcuts anymore uh, as it happened with me and with org mode as well so what I did is I I'm I created um, hydras for each major mode on the F1 key and when I press F1 in my org mode my Hydra here shows up doing all kinds of stuff uh, for example and this is this is common for all my Hydras the the first three lines are visualizing the um, current setting of my or mapping of my F keys so uh, the F1 Hydra is uh, the major mode Hydra if you will uh, the F2 uh, key is showing a Hydra about window management and so forth. You can look it up in my configuration later on if you want to know what the rest is. Uh, the line above, the first line is when I press Shift F2 for example, then I, I jump to the Hydra related to Git. So the the rest of this thing here below is totally up to myself so i created it according to my uh, wishes in order to remember some things i do not use quite often so especially for example uh, let's say how do i uh, access synonyms of a word so let's go to um, this word here and then i can press f1 and then followed by S and then uh, I can go to the list of synonyms here in order to find a better word for additional in this case. Um, so this is not a feature I'm using all the time therefore it was important for myself to put it in a Hydra so that I, I know okay I just have to press one and then I can look it up uh, what this command uh, how I can access the, uh, this command and so therefore I'm using hydras all the time in order to remember things for example I showed you the the org timer and I, I I don't use this feature that often that I remember these shortcuts and therefore I have these shortcuts here as well as the command so I just have to press zero in order to start a new timer and f1 and uh, underscore to stop it uh, and this helps me a lot in my daily life because uh, for features i do not use quite often um, i don't have to remember all those all the things all the time uh, there is also a link to an article of my blog which describes my key binding strategy for the moment and how I include hydras in this process. I already mentioned it briefly. Uh, so when I press F2, uh, my eyebrows or buffer management hydra pops up. Most of those commands are related to eyebrows. Eyebrows is an extension which uh, manages different uh, buffer settings. So it almost works like virtual desktops on an operating system. So in this case, you can see here in this line, there are my personal um, uh, spaces or configuration, how they called uh, with eyebrows. So usually the first one always shows my agenda and my inbox. The second one is uh, personal mis miscellaneous stuff. 
the third one is related to general business and then there is a series of uh, configurations that relates to tasks I'm actually doing and now I'm in the in the task of creating an emox and org mode demo so this is number number seven and number eight for example when I press eight I switch to a different view on the same task in this case uh, with um, um, with different keys I can switch through those window settings quite easily I can create new ones by, uh, by using C for example uh, which is a copy of the current view I can rename it by R uh, this is an example and so I created a new setup and I can switch between the new one and the old ones either by, by the left right command in my case or typing the numbers directly. Uh, this is a very very handy feature for myself in order to be able to uh, work with many buffers in parallel uh, and and keep my sanity in, in, this, in this example because I don't want to uh, destroy my current buffer uh, setting when I'm switching tasks and I'm switching tasks all the time therefore I tend to create for each task I'm working on I tend to create an eyebrows configuration which I can jump back to if I want to uh, switch um, my tasks Oh, and the next feature I'm going to present you is something I came up myself at least with the idea uh, it's called my org region to property and uh, you probably already uh, know what this is uh, doing so if I'm here in a paragraph and I'm uh, creating a region and I'm invoking my command then the current selection gets written to um, a property of the heading so let's say I'm going to create an ID uh, property then the the marked words here from the region gets written to the ID uh, while this doesn't make sense uh, uh, except for demo purposes you can uh, think of other uh, applications for this feature for example address uh, and um, city and um, company so uh, com Penny. So I'm, I'm using this for uh, contact management all the time and uh, now you can imagine when I copy something from a web page or something like that then I just have to uh, mark the, the words accordingly and then use my nifty feature in order to write this additionally to the uh, property in this case company then I have here let's say the, the address of this, this person uh, and then I just have to use ADD and tab completion and this gets then written to the address property so I really do think that this is uh, a very important feature when you are using properties all, all the time okay so that's it that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, I showed you some nice features that work out of the box within Emacs and within the Orgmux extension. I showed you a selection of some features which I do think are worth customizing your Org mode or your Emacs. And um, as I already mentioned, you can find all the material that I showed you on my webpage here. So you might want to visit it uh, if you want to access my configuration and so forth, where you can look up how it's done. Uh, this video did not uh, emphasize the how it's done. It was emph emphasizing the features themselves and how they are used within my digital daily life. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the demo. Uh, please give me some feedback. Uh, you can hand in some feedback via the conference page or via my blog page. Uh, and um, well, then I hope you learned something new uh, and you can apply it to your daily life.
Thanks, Carl, for your interesting talk. And as I already saw, you have already answered all questions on the IRC. So maybe you can comment on, uh, on notes in the chat. Sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to, to be around a little bit further in the IRC chat. And of course, if there are some questions, you are still able to post them in the IRC chat. Uh, one comment I've saw uh, related to the uh, drawing, the artist mode. Uh, of course, this is a very, very simple mode. Uh, for proper diagrams, I would uh, switch to uh, DTA or how it's pronounced. I don't know what uh, Sasha was proposing. And if you uh, go a, even a level higher, uh, you should probably check out Plant UML. Plant UML is a tool I'm I'm using in my business life all the time because it allows me to concentrate on what I am going to, what what I do want to see. And the uh, plant UML is doing all the rest and the layouting and uh, usually the result is, is a very decent one. Um, yeah. Uh, what else did we discuss in the IRC? Yeah, the Hydra strategy. Uh, yeah, of course, there is the major mode Hydra. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if the major mode Hydra was around before I started with my strategy. Um, uh, but I'm, of course, mimicking the same uh, use case as major mode Hydra tries to solve. So basically, major mode Hydra is a standardized way of defining a Hydra for each major mode. And uh, well, there's a package for that for that purpose. Uh, and my approach is basically uh, following the same rationale, but not with this specific package. And uh, to be honest, I've never uh, uh, looked deeply into uh, the major mode Hydra in order to find out if there are some things that uh, would help me in my setup as well. So far, um, I'm quite happy with my own setup, probably, if, when I find some time, um, I'm going to take a look on the major mode Hydra to see if there are some functionalities which extend the things I could do on my own as well. Is Mermaid integratable in org mode? I'm afraid I don't know Mermaid, so I cannot comment on that one. So thank you for answering your questions. And I think we'll wait a little bit to see if there are more questions. Sure. Meanwhile, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference. They did a very good job uh, for doing this uh, conference on for bringing it online. And uh, I would urge every every attendee to 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 uh, give them a round of applause by handing in um, email or a thank you, and of course to uh, add comments to all the um, people presenting stuff here. A question from Sven. Yes, I'm using Vim on a daily basis. So uh, I'm using uh, tools. I'm using Vim and Emacs for the purpose where they are best suited. And uh, so basically all my emails are written in Vim. All my Usenet postings are written in Vim. When I uh, edit a configuration file, it's mostly done in Vim. Um, that's that's how where I love Wim. Uh, but for everything that is uh, extending the uh, simple uh, editing um, um, uh, uh, work in in a text file, uh, I'm I'm using the Emacs because uh, Emacs is so much more than just an editor. Um, and I'm not sure if Wim is in the position of of going that far um, anytime in the future. <laughs> But you, you should, you should um, learn both, in my opinion, because they both um, are, are very good for different kind of uh, things. 
And uh, if somebody's interested, I'm using Vim with the Vim bindings, and I'm using Emacs with the standard Emacs bindings. And so far, there is no knot in my brain. So I, I can uh, easily switch between those two without having any muscle memory issues so far. So thanks for answering your questions and for your talk. And maybe you can meet other people on Jitsi, which link sure. I just posted in the chat. And thank you for your talk. Have a nice day. Thank you.